painting isn't about putting down the perfect stroke. It's about correcting the ones that are wrong. Now Smooth is going to pose for me for this painting, which I'm going to do in gouache. And I chose a dog painting because when you're painting a dog, you're dealing with a lot of unknowns and they're not going to hold still for you. And so when you lay down a stroke, you may have to change it, change your mind. That's true of any painting, really, whether I'm painting a supermarket entrance or jets at a runway. But in particular with dogs, you're dealing with all kinds of things that can change as you go. Okay, smooth, there you go. Okay, smooth, let's get you clean. So I want to talk in this video a little bit about process for how to deal with a subject that's moving a lot. Okay, shake. You can shake. Attaboy. Okay. Now I start out with uh, just trying to lay in the basic lines. I know it's going to look rough at first, but that's the key, is just to get something down. The nice thing about gouache is you can make changes as you go. I'm just laying down strokes with a brush, and I wasn't sure at this point whether I wanted to uh, have him sitting or standing. He was sitting at this point, and I realized it'd make more sense for him to be standing. So I'm changing, rubbing out the background, and I'm putting him up on his feet. And for something like this, with gouache, it's an opaque paint, so I can cover over my first start and get it more or less right. This is true in oils also. You can also rub down to the underpainting. The underpainting, that blue and gold color that I have in this one, uh, I did with casein paint. And if I rub through the gouache, it'll lift all that paint off with a wet rag, and I can come down to the, um, the colored underpainting, which won't lift up. Now you can do an underpainting in acrylic or colored gesso uh, or acrylic gouache, and you can have an impermeable layer that will stay there. Part of the key to all this is having a mental image of what's going on with the structure of Smooth's head as we go. Uh, this is an Arctic wolf skull, and I'm thinking about the shape of the skull and trying to turn it in my mind as Smooth turns his head, so that I can think about what structure is going on below his forms. And having that mental image is crucial, I think, for doing any kind of animal painting, because as you're looking at the subject moving and turning, you're forming a three-dimensional image in your mind that's guiding your choices and helping you fix mistakes and helping you correct what you see to a, kind of an ideal model uh, in your head. Bob Ross famously said, we don't have mistakes, we just have happy little accidents. And I think I know what he's trying to say with that. He wants people to not be afraid to start, uh, to get going with a picture, uh, and to allow mistakes to happen. Um, I, At one point, I resisted what he was saying because it sounded like he was settling for something that wasn't as good as it could be. Um, because you do have to correct mistakes. You have to have a high sense of dissatisfaction. But I think you have to have faith in the process and faith in the ability to fix a mistake when you find it. And if there's a way to improve a picture, it's worth doing. You don't have to pull it off uh, and just hope for the best. Uh, and that's true when you're doing a painting like this in gouache. 
Uh, you can make changes in it all the way through. And the process of having random or wrong statements that you fix can actually end up being like a happy accident or something that ends up being kind of appealing from a technical point of view. But you're not doing it for that reason. You're just trying to get it right. When you come right down to it, painting is a series of approximations. You start with one statement of it that's rough and simple, and you refine it a little bit more and a little bit more until you finally get to the statement that's most correct. It's good to think in terms of having kind of a chaos engine and a correction engine. The chaos engine can throw down random shapes almost unconsciously, and the correction engine can take those shapes, use the possibilities they suggest, and then form them into what your mental model looks like. So thank you, Smooth. Want a high five? High five? Good boy. Good boy. Okay, thanks for watching. You might want to check out my website or subscribe to my channel. And then here's a playlist with more good stuff and a video that continues the story. So check them out and share with your friends.